Great. So, we specified uh, this condition for stability for linear systems which is uh, connected to the state transition matrix and let us see how to prove it. We are actually saying this is equivalent alright. So, like I said it is actually uh, in a lot of linear systems books you will not see epsilon delta definitions, but you will see this as the definition for internal stability alright. So, um, so, of course, let us let us see how it is equivalent. Yeah. So, uh, okay, I am unfortunately I repeated it, I did not need to. The solution looks like this. So, this is the how you define or write the solution for a linear system in terms of the state transition matrix, right? And you are already given an initial condition x0. So, let us start with assuming that this is true. So, if this is true we want to prove that the system is stable in the epsilon delta sense that we just defined ok. So, if the RHS holds I know that the norm of x is less than equal to norm of this guy right. So, in fact ah, I do not know what happened but ok right. So, uh, I, I have sort of skipped a step. So, norm of x is actually equal to I do not need this. So, norm of x is actually equal to norm of the state transition matrix multiplied by the initial condition vector, which by this property is less than equal to norm of phi t t 0 times the norm of x 0 right just by using my induced norm inequality all right not doing anything fancy here. And I have already assumed that the right hand side is true. So, I have an upper bound on this. So, I get this guy all right excellent. Now, if I am given an epsilon I choose my delta as this. Yeah, delta is just epsilon divided by this guy. Yeah, because it is obvious that if this happens, then norm of x is less than or equal to k t0 epsilon by k t0, and I am done, right? Well, in fact, this is becomes less than, not less than or equal to less than because remember that my initial condition is strictly less than delta ok. So, keep these in mind huh? the less thans and less than equal to's in the stability definition everything is strictly less than yeah or strictly greater than. So, delta is strictly positive epsilon is strictly positive initial condition x 0 is strictly less than delta then all trajectories are strictly less than epsilon ok. So, x 0 is strictly less than delta therefore, this is not a less than equal to, but a strictly less than just keep track of these. Uh, <laughs> uh, these are sort of important ok. I, I not going to discuss uh, too much in length on why, uh, but we like to uh, work with open balls or open sets ok and the set uh, norm x t less than epsilon is an open set yeah, but norm. So, this is an open set, but if I take this guy this is a closed set ok we do not like working with closed sets, hmm? we do not like them. Basically, we do not like to work I mean even when you are doing geometric control and so on, you will see we do not like working with manifolds or any spaces with boundaries. Hmm? So, so as soon as you have something like this, there is a boundary here. Hmm? 
it impacts differentiability and so on and so forth and what happens on the boundary and these are annoying things we do not like to consider so much. Huh? So, we like to work with open sets because there is no actually boundary here it goes all the way I mean very close to epsilon. So, yeah we are fine. So, so keep these in mind just just as a I would say just to be a little bit more precise ok it is good to be precise sometimes ok. But the important thing to remember is that very easy to choose a delta given an epsilon. I mean I think we have done enough examples for you to get a feel for this I hope you just write the solution ok and you write the solution here and and uh, and you make an inequality on the solution if you want to and then what do you need you just need in fact uh, how did I get the delta choice I needed this to be less than epsilon I need norm x to be less than epsilon from this uh, I can in fact directly get what I need my x0 to be smaller than right because x0 has to be smaller than epsilon over kt0 for this to happen right ok. So, I have simply used these inequalities I need x to be less than epsilon. So, if I take this quantity which is possibly larger than norm x and I make that less than epsilon then it is guaranteed that x is also less than epsilon. So, I have just used these inequalities smartly to my advantage right. So, this is how I always find a delta given an epsilon. So, if you get a problem on stability this is what you have to do yeah you write the solution and if you have an upper bound on the solution or the solution itself just upper bound it by epsilon and you try to find what is the initial uh, x0 because the solution will always contain the norm x0 itself ok always yeah, without that without initial condition there will be no solution. The only thing is in the nice linear case initial condition appears linearly yeah this is one of the outcomes of linearity right uh, which will not happen in a nonlinear case ok you will not necessarily have linearity in initial conditions either ok ok very good one side too easy no problem other way around if I assume stability holds and I want to prove this if I assume this system is stable and I want to prove this happens then we have to make some interesting moves ok. If LHS holds it implies what if I am given an epsilon let us be precise if I am given an epsilon which is positive there exists a delta which potentially depends on initial condition initial time and also epsilon but ok whatever and is also possible positive right such that if my initial conditions lie in a delta ball then my solutions lie in an epsilon ball ok this is exactly the definition copied yeah. Now, I say something interesting I say that I will fix a T a and choose an X a such that this happens what is this by the way what is the left hand side what is the right hand side what is the left hand side this guy what is this huh? is it huh? yeah it is weird no it is not it is not um, uh, first of all I did not say x t a equal to x a or anything like that notice I did not say that yeah ok I did not say that. So, this is nothing it is not the solution at time t a or t 0 or anything like that ok it is just the product of the state transition matrix times some vector x a ok ok what is exactly happening here the first thing I did is I fixed a time right. So, that this matrix now becomes a constant matrix right. Once I fix a time a constant matrix then what is my sort of a claim this is actually a claim in a sense right. I am saying I choose an x a such that the 
norm of this matrix yeah what would be the norm of this matrix by definition what would it be supremum of this guy divided by this guy over all possible x hmm? yeah but i am saying and and i had even made a uh, claim here right that is always greater than equal to so norm of a times x is always less than equal to norm of a times norm of x right but i am saying there exists an x a such that this equality holds okay in general if you plug in arbitrary x this is true yes just by definition of the norm the induced norm but i am claiming that there exists an x a because i am now talking about a constant matrix phi t a t 0 whatever a okay i am claiming that i can choose an x a such that this i get an equality here why do you think i can do that Really, I, I took a supremum. Do you remember the supremum, right? Supremum is like, you know, it's like least upper bound. Does not have to be in the set and all that. It is the supreme. I mean, we saw these examples, right? 1 minus e minus x. And where it's, uh, and then you are talking about the set which is, uh, uh, so 1 minus, e, sorry, 1 minus e minus x is what it is. No, that was on 1 minus e minus x, right? Can't be. 1 plus e minus x. Why don't we do 1 plus e minus x? Right? 1 plus e to the power minus x. Yeah. No. Does it work? No, no, no. What? How did we choose it? Ah, 1 minus e minus x. And so the set was uh, basically this guy. I get everything from 0, 1, right, but the supremum is exactly 1, right, not in the set and so on. Hmm? Why do you think this does not happen in this case? I, I, how can I get an exact equality here? You are saying that is what will give you the the equality. Pretty good, sort of close to it. Yes, uh, but that's for a specific p, by the way. Um, see, if you um, one of the ways to convince yourself, I mean, none of this is a proof, by the way, is one of the things to remember is that I constructed a weird set here. Okay, I did something funny. I, I made an open it some I did open somewhere close somewhere and things like that I created a funny set so that it fails yeah uh, in this case you are talking about all of Rn okay uh, which is both open and closed right you have all the nice properties that you want in all of Rn okay the second thing to sort of uh, should help you convince uh, should help convince you is that I have formulae here for norm of a which is independent of x, right? I mean, anyway, its supremum is expected to be independent of x, yeah. But I have some formula which exactly gives me what my norm is. Okay. So the basically, uh, again, not a proof. This is not a proof. If you ask me for a proof, I'll have to hunt for a proof, in the sense that it will have to be. It has to be based on. It, it's basically based on the idea that the reals have this nice uh, Banach space type property okay so if I think all of Rn it has a Banach space it's a Banach space Hilbert space whatever it has all the good properties which we talked about okay so it's essentially based on the fact that you're taking all of Rn you're not making any funny sets and it's a Hilbert space or a Banach space 
okay so that's why you will always have an xa for which given any constant matrix you will be able to find that equality so basically the max and the soup will become the same okay that's what we are saying okay so that's basically the idea and that is what you rely on to prove this okay once you have such an xa which gives you this equality okay here i have just said that it exists by the definition of induced norm but it's not as simple as that it's a little bit more than that just like we said yeah uh, once you have such an xa what's the good thing you can actually now play with this system okay what do we do we consider this sort of an initial condition okay don't worry about how this is going we it will sort of you will close the loop and see how things worked out well for you okay but this is the clinching thing here yeah once you have such an xa i construct an initial condition okay i construct an initial condition uh, which is this okay what does this give me if i take a norm it gives me delta by 2 and these cancel out right so i know that the initial condition is bounded by delta right because it is equal to delta t0 by 2 therefore it is upper bounded by delta is that okay i have just constructed this x0 in this funny way okay i am basically going to try to use the this definition to get to this sort of an inequality okay so i'm going to i'm basically trying to use elements of this definition so i have constructed my initial condition using the delta that i got from stability okay so i know that this the way i have constructed i know that norm x0 is less than delta which means that norm xt corresponding to this x0 will be less than epsilon right so norm of xta i don't compute xt for arbitrary t i now compute xta okay which is phi ta t0 times x0 okay phi ta t0 times x0 i have chosen this x0 in this interesting way okay again this is a scalar but anyway this product the norm of this product is less than epsilon by my stability assumption right so this is less than epsilon by my assumption of stability this is a scalar goes out okay and this product i have already claimed is actually equal to this yeah norm of phi times xa is actually equal to norm of phi times norm of xa because i have chosen this xa in this very special way all right okay and this is less than epsilon you can see that i am already close to the end now okay not difficult now because i have the norm of phi ta t0 basically i have the norm of phi which i want to bound right so i am going to get a bound of norm of phi here right so that's essentially what i have again i have repeated it and from here i get norm of phi these xs cancel out that's the nice thing xa plays no role anymore and i get the norm bound as this guy which is some kt0 okay now you might say that i took a particular ta and i mean i took a ta and so on but remember i said fix ta to begin with yeah so if you say that i fix ta you only prove for one particular ta i will say that you fix some other ta or a ta prime but you can do the same arguments again and you will get the same inequality again in fact nothing will change it will be exactly the same because the right hand side does not contain ta or xa or anything like that all the 
everything that we introduced goes missing from here on the right hand side. Therefore, you can keep changing this TA to TA prime, TA double prime, triple prime, whatever, different choices of TA, right hand side is not going to change, which means that for arbitrary choice of T, this has to hold. Okay? So, basically you have proved the other side of the argument also. Okay? Makes sense? A little bit involved, but the only thing that is important here is the existence of an XA such that this happens. Okay? Alright? All of this works out again because Rn is a very, very nice vector space. Alright? If you do not have very nice vector spaces, but in we do not work with the non nice ones. Again, let me be honest. Yeah? Uh, because we have already said that we are working with some non linear space, uh, inner product linear space where you have Cauchy convergence is equal to convergence. So, obviously, we are already sitting in some very nice vector space. Okay? So, having this kind of a property is actually not so unusual. Okay? So, what about uniform stability? I mean nothing will change, you will you will get the same kind of result. Okay. One side the this this to this is anyway too simple because your if for uniform stability this k will be independent of t0. Right? That is how you will have uniform stability because you sort of remove the dependence on initial initial time. So therefore this will there will be no longer a T0, it will be a just a constant k, okay? Just a constant k for all t0. Alright. And once you have that, going from here to here is very easy because uh, k is independent of t0. So delta is independent of t0. Done. On the other side, also if you see no longer dependent on t0, right? Because you assumed uniform stability. So, the delta, uh, so, so this delta is also independent of T0. You started with uniform stability. So, obviously, this has no T0 here. Once you do not have T0, your X0 does not have T0. Okay? And this guy does not have T0. Alright? Here also there is no T0. So, <laughs> essentially, too simple, right? This T0 dependence vanishes here. Okay? So, again you get a k which is independent of t0. So, it works out on both sides. Yeah? So, very simple which is why I am not giving a separate proof, but all you have to do is remove the t0s from your proofs. That is it. That is all you do here. Alright? Great. Uh, finally, uh, for linear systems, uh, asymptotic stability is actually equal to stability plus this sort of a convergence. Okay? So, attractivity is this guy. But this is pretty evident, right? Because if you write the solution, you know that as your solution, uh, as time increases, this goes to 0. Therefore, whatever be the initial condition, your solutions will converge to 0, right? So, this is essentially attractivity. In fact, global attractivity, but I already said that local global is irrelevant in this context, okay? So, if this goes to 0, then initial condition is irrelevant, which is just some scaling constant. Okay, so everything goes to zero. All right. If there are no questions, we will sort of conclude here. Yeah. So this is uh, basically what we have for stability, uh, and um, I believe from next time we'll be able to start talking about the Lyapunov theorems. All right. So already we'll get to the crux of how to analyze stability for nonlinear systems without actually um, solving the system. As you can see very hard, yeah, even these conditions phi norm of phi less than equal to kt0 or k are virtually impossible to uh, you know claim anything on without actually solving the system. So, you know, so this is uh, something you have to do. You, you will have to do the Lyapunov theorems without which for nonlinear systems you cannot claim anything. Yeah? except with the linearization methods which are restrictive yeah because they don't give you a basin of attraction all right okay all right so we'll we'll start with those from next session okay